They don't like to talk about it. Hi everybody, it's Don from Don's Family Vacation and today we're going to talk about 10 things that, yeah, the cruise lines just don't like to talk about. And if you didn't know any of these things, they'd be thrilled about it. So we're going to talk about those 10 things cruise lines don't talk about right after this. Number one thing that happens that they don't like to talk about is crime. A cruise ship is no different. It's not like this sanctuary where everybody is beautiful and nice and friendly and everything. It's people. And so people come in all shapes, sizes, walks of life and how they think. So uh, the crime on a cruise ship is just like the crime in your nor normal city. Uh, Things that can happen are, you know, things can get stolen from your room. There can be fights on board and assaults all the way up to murder on ships. And these actually take place. And the real kind of bad thing about being on a cruise ship when these things happen, all crimes can be reported at the port destination. So even though you're an American citizen or a Canadian citizen and you're on a cruise ship, from Miami or Orlando or New York, if you're in the Bahamas, they'll report the crime to the Bahama police station. So now after your cruise, you end up getting back to the United States and what? What are you gonna to do to find out what's happening with your case, whether it be lost property or assault charges or anything like that? And nine times out of 10, the authorities just kind of ignore it and let it go because they know that once you get back to the United States it's going to be you know you might make one or two phone calls but that's it so yeah the uh, cruise ships don't like to talk about crime on their ships number two you can miss the ship if you're not back by the time the ship is supposed to leave and you take off and they, the ship is gone and not only that it's not the cruise line's responsibility anymore uh, it's yours. So if you decide to shop too much or you uh, had a late lunch and were eating, eating too much or your taxi broke down, it doesn't matter if the cruise ship leaves. It's your, you know, whatever. If, if you could have that happen on the very first day, your very first port on a 14-day cruise, and now you're stuck at this port. And if there's no plane or anything leaving from that area, like there are some places in Fiji that are only boat accessible. So if you're stuck there, you might have to wait days before you can get off that island and find a way to meet that cruise. And all that expense is on you. So if you're one of those travelers that travel on a budget and only have so much money in your bank account and so much limit on your credit cards, and you know, you're booking a cheap cruise inside stateroom and it's, you, you just want to get away on a vacation, don't be late for the ship because all of a sudden you're going to be stuck in Bahamas, have to catch up with the cruise ship and you got no money and no, lim no money left on your credit cards and what do you do? You're stuck. So yeah, don't miss the ship and they won't tell you about it till it's too late. Number three. You're looking forward to going to Ocho Rios in Jamaica. It's you planned your cruise specifically for that port. Uh, yeah, you may not go to that port. A lot of it depends on a lot of things. Uh, the political climate in the area. I've seen crews cancel port destinations because there was protesting or uprisings. I've seen bad weather is the majority of cases uh, or sickness outbreaks in the city. Things like that can actually cancel that cruise stopping at that port and you're not going to be refunded because in all the fine print of every cruise ship out there says that you, your destinations may travel. Uh, and a lot of the cases is, let's be honest, if you're out in really rough weather and you don't have a dock to pull up to, your ship has to ferry you on with the charter boat. Well, if the cruise ship is stuck in weather like this going up and down, can you imagine what it would be on in one of those small boats trying to get to shore? So a lot of the times they cancel a port is because of safety. But 
you just might miss that one port that you were dreaming of going to. And yeah, they're not going to mention it until it happens. Number four, your car breaks down, a bus can break down. Guess what? Your ship can break down. And if you're nine miles out into the middle of the ocean, your ship breaking down is not fun. Everyone knows the story about the carnival ship that broke down and was stranded for four days. First of all, there, the engine stopped, then the generator stopped, then there was no uh, air conditioning anymore, then the toilets started backing up because nothing was able to flush the toilets through the system. And the being no lights and everything, the below decks was completely dark. So people ended up pitching tents with their sheets up on top of the deck just to get away from the smell that was below deck, plus the food all started to spoil, all this kind of stuff. Ships can break down, accidents can happen, fires can start on a cruise ship, and it can be very, very scary uh, when you're on these ships and something like that happens because there's nothing around. It's not like you can just run out into the street. You're, you know, going in the water. So. Uh, keep that in mind because, yeah, if you're calling your travel agent and they said, hey, I'm looking forward to this cruise, I go, oh yeah, but by the way, the ship might break down, you could be stranded and there might be a fire in there. Yeah, they're not going to tell you that ever. I'm not going to tell you that ever, except now. Number five, casinos on the cruise ships. Everyone likes to say, think about striking it rich on a cruise ship casino to pay for your entire trip while you're there and having extra money to spend on your cruise ship. And, but just be warned because the cruise ships are not registered in the United States or Canada. Uh, I think there's actually only one legally registered cruise ship in all of the United States. And that's because it's strictly a United States ship it only goes between there and you know the coast in Hawaii, so it doesn't leave the jurisdiction of the United States, so it had to register in the United States. That being said, the casinos, there's no gaming commissions on casinos because they're governed by international law, not the United States Gaming Commission. So a lot of people have reported that, yeah, it seems like those slots don't pay off as much as, say, the Vegas slots. Or, you know, it's just, I don't see people winning in roulette quite as often. Or they have more decks than they're supposed to in the 21 when you're playing blackjack. So keep in mind, there's no gaming commission out there. And that means the odds of you winning on a cruise ship are even more than striking it rich in Las Vegas. Number six, for all of you people out there who believe in ghosts and spirits and the supernatural and things like that, this one might disturb you a little bit, but all cruise ships that carry more than 600 passengers, they all have morgues on the ship because people die on cruise ships. They can fall overboard and drown. There can be an accident on the ship. They can fall downstairs and break their neck. They could have a heart attack. They could just pass away of old age. Things like this happen on a cruise ship and they you know, you can't have a body just lying around somewhere in a closet. So these ships have morgues and they're inspected all the time. And yeah, if, if you ever end up visiting it, I hope it's just a visit and not a permanent stay. Number seven, all cruise ships are inspected for cleanliness and you know, for sickness and disease, so things don't spread on the ships and things like that. And anything under a score of 85 out of 100 is considered a fail. And they'll check, you know, the food storages, uh, they'll check the kitchens, the restaurants, they'll check the rooms, they'll check, you know, all the sanitary items on the ships, garbage disposals and waste management and stuff like that. And you would think, we all like to think of cruise ships as these big, shiny, beautiful, luxury yachts. But in reality, there's thousands of people working on this cruise ship. And, uh, you know, it's a huge operation to keep everything running smoothly. So sometimes, just like in your place of business, sometimes you put things aside 
to save money or cost cutting or you just don't have enough staff to do it and cruise lines can fail the sanitary inspections and ships that you would not think brand new ships less than a year old luxury largest ships in the world have failed the sanitary inspections that doesn't mean they're filthy it could be the ma a matter of there is no you know the this cover was not screwed on completely tight you lose a point well it was on just not extra tight you know what i mean there are some little things in there that are very very minute so it doesn't mean that they're storing your food unsanitary or they're keeping your chicken out in the middle of a hot oven area in the middle of Korea, <laughs> Caribbean or stuff like that. There are a lot of things in that inspection, but that's something you don't think about. The first thing you think about is, oh, how beautiful the ship is, but down below decks, you just never know what exactly is going on. Number eight, you're on a cruise ship. There's 5,000 people on this ship plus 1,300 crew members. That's 6,300 people on this cruise ship. You're nine miles out into the middle of the ocean and two people have a flu and a virus. And they go to the restaurant and they're coughing in the restaurant while they're at the buffet. The people coming behind them touch the same areas that those people touched. And soon the entire ship is infected with this virus. And everyone knows that the norovirus can spread like wildfire on a cruise ship. That's why you'll see cruise ships do everything they can to maintain and contain an outbreak if it happens to the point where they will lock you in your staterooms, put up a no trespassing and no entrance sign. And in some, some cases, they'll even post guards to make sure you don't leave that room. And anyone who comes in contact with you is wearing full, almost radiation looking type suits because this, that you know, there's nothing worse than trying to contain that virus. Not only that, once a room has that norovirus inside, they basically boil everything in that room and spray that room down to make sure that it doesn't spread again to the next passengers coming in. So they do take a lot of effort to keep things sanitary and things from spreading. But people are people. Some people will go to the washroom, they won't wash their hands afterwards. Some people will go and they'll touch food in the buffet to see if it's hot, and then they'll walk away. Well, you just touched my food, what are you doing? Well, yeah, not everyone will use the hand sanitizers that are all over the ships nowadays. So a lot of the sickness that spreads has nothing to do with the cruise lines. It has everything to do with the sanitary cleanliness of people. And so, Keep that in mind, it's not their fault, but yeah, they're not gonna tell you about it if they don't have to. Number nine, yes, people can fall overboard. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. People go into the ocean. In one case, a Disney cruise line picked up a passenger who had fell, fallen over a Royal Caribbean cruise ship two hours earlier. Uh, so that person was extremely lucky. Now, Let's get this straight. 99% of everybody who goes into the ocean does so for two reasons. One, it's a suicide attempt, which is becoming very popular, unfortunately. Uh, they take themselves on a luxury cruise, one last hurrah, and then they jump overboard near the last days of this cruise. A very sad event for their entire family, thinking that the person is out enjoying themselves and they're whole plan is to do that. And number two, people are just drunk and doing stupid things on a cruise ship. Uh, yeah, you cannot fall overboard on hardly any deck on a cruise ship. It would be virtually almost impossible without you climbing a fence, sitting up on the top of a railing in the balcony. The cruise sh ships do not rock that much to send you overboard uh, so yeah you might think that you know I heard you know seven people last month went overboard on cruise ships yeah well how many of them were drunk when they did it so if you're not drinking to the point where you don't know what's going on and you can barely walk and think straight yeah you're not gonna fall overboard yeah ever but 
cruise lines are not going to tell you, oh, by the way, you might fall overboard. Careful. <laughs> They're not going to tell you that. And number 10. This is a big one to me because it's kind of terrifying because I've been on so many cruises in my life. And that is, uh, we all know that people call in bomb threats all the time to schools or into businesses or government places or even airlines and that. But cruise lines get bomb threats as well. In fact, in one year, the cruise line industry got over 300 bomb threats that year. That's almost one a day, uh, which is kind of really scary when you know how many people are boarding some of these cruise ships and how many people work on these cruise ships. And you, you know, so the next time that you're in a line to get on a cruise and it's a long line and it's taking a long time for people to go through luggage and things like that, maybe don't get so angry because yeah, that long inspection line just might prevent somebody from doing something really bad on a cruise ship. So that one is the most scary to me because all the other stuff I can handle. Uh, I'm pretty well versed on the cruise ship. I'm not going to fall overboard. I know what to look for when I'm on shore excursions. I'm not going to get robbed. I know where to store my stuff. All this stuff I'm pretty well rounded with. But somebody randomly doing that on a cruise ship, yeah, there's just nothing you can do about it. And no, why would a cruise line ever tell you that, yeah, there could at, at potentially at one point be a bomb? Because you know what? In this day and age, if you go watch a baseball game or a football game or you go to a concert, you never know there could be a bomb. That's just the reality of where we're living. So cruise lines aren't going to tell you this. Airlines aren't going to tell you this. But be aware, it's out there. So yeah, those are 10 things, 10 potentially scary things that cruise lines are never going to advertise and are never going to tell you unless they're actually directly asked about it. So yeah, keep that in mind next time you're going for that cruise. Woo! So there you have 10 things that cruise lines aren't going to tell you that you really should know. I uh, hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more tip videos and more travel vlogs, please hit that subscribe button. We, uh, we are scheduling some cruises. I have a poll out in one of my pre previous videos now asking you what cruise I'd like you'd like me to see uh, between the Oasis, the Carnival Vista, and uh, the Norwegian Getaway, uh, which I'm planning in December. So. Um, you can look for that video as well. I'll leave a link down below. And uh, yeah, please hit that subscribe button. Until next time, please have yourself a very safe and a great vacation.